All right, we finally have the man who covered the game tonight down at the stadium. Let's bring in John McMullen. Uh, John, uh, listen, we knew they had to lose somewhere along the line, so the L is not shocking, but the, the methodology of the L is, is shocking because we've had warning that they are weak against the run, and Washington exploited it. How shocked are you that this happened tonight without any adjustments? Uh, a little bit shocked. Uh, you know, from the from the standpoint of stopping the run, look, I, I just heard uh, Seth, and he's right. I, I mean, this team misses Jordan Davis dramatically, and I think I've talked about that a lot, uh, whether it's here on Burst 365. I think people don't realize because – he doesn't play that much. And they say, well, he, he only plays 25 snaps a game. Uh, and, but, you know, when first and 10 turns into second and 10 or second and nine, it allows you to do so many more things defensively. Without Jordan Davis, all of a sudden you have this, you know, I joke 3.7 yards of offense in a cloud of dust uh, running game from Washington. I mean, that's a – their, their longest run was 11 yards all day, wow. Wow. but they got three and four and three, and then you get a first down, and it kept rolling over and rolling over and rolling over, and they couldn't set the line of scrimmage without Jordan Davis, uh, and and that's how Washington had to win this game. I talked on the pregame show. They had to run the football. They had to shorten the game. They had to stay in it in the fourth quarter. They did everything uh, beautifully from their standpoint they did everything they needed to do so you have to give them credit from the Eagles standpoint they they had so many opportunities to win this game they should have won the game you know Fuzz Watkins with 50 yard reception gets up fumbles the football you know in a lot of ways I think it's karma because Nick Sirianni got mad at a bunch of reporters who said you know maybe this turnover ratio there's a little luck involved oh. uh, plus 15 um and i don't like the word luck either so i get why he doesn't but there's certainly randomness involved and you saw it today sometimes the ball doesn't bounce your way yep. the dallas got her fumbled but the officials blew a face mask i mean it, there's not much you can do about that um small margin of error and the eagles weren't uh, able to overcome it and and they're finally uh, eight and one. They finally lost the football game. I don't think the sky is falling, uh, but they need to learn something from this loss. Hey, John. Last week, uh, Nick Sirianni, when he was questioned by the media about this team's inept tackling, he said maybe we put. I'm paraphrasing. Maybe we put so much emphasis on getting turnovers and, and things like that that we've kind of neglected the aspect of basic tackling. Okay, so you're thinking you're going to see a much better performance tonight. It was no better than what they did against the Houston Texans. So what did Nick have to say after the game about the poorest tackling again tonight? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll have to watch the game again. I, I didn't get the feeling that the tackling was as bad as it was in Houston. It was really bad in Houston. It was Detroit-level bad in Houston. I didn't get the feeling there. I got the feeling they didn't set the line of scrimmage. I mean, they got pushed back. So that's what Jordan Davis does. He's sort of um, make sure everything is anchored. It becomes a little bit more difficult. And as I said, you know, their longest run of the game was 11 yards from Brian Robinson. So it wasn't like they were getting gashed like Damian Pierce uh, down with the Texans. Although, you know, next week it's Jonathan Taylor. So those three-yard runs might turn into six or seven with Jonathan Taylor or, you know, maybe 50 if he gets loose. I mean, that's a different kind of back. Um, they're going to have an issue defending the run without Jordan Davis, bottom line. And he's not coming back. And I think people say, well, he'll be back for Tennessee and Derrick Henry. Um, no, no, that's when he's eligible to come back. That doesn't mean he's coming back right. from a high angle screen. He was in the locker room leading up to this game. I saw him. He was still limping. Um, so there's no guarantee he's going to be back. They have, they're going to have an issue stopping the run. Uh, with without him, John. Um, did anybody ask Nick? You know, you said he was a little bit in, in, little, uh, in a little bit of a, a mood after the game. Did anybody inquire why he declined that five-yard penalty? You know, at the end of the half, um, 
rather than taking it and putting the kicker in a situation where he's kicking a 65 yard instead of a 55 yarder. Um, <laughs> yeah, he could uh, talk about it a little bit. I think ultimately you, you have to give Joey Sly a lot of credit. He kicked a 58 yarder, I think, and a 55 yarder. So those are big, big, big kicks. And, you know, he's never, been, he's not Justin Tucker. So I don't know if you expect somebody to hit that. You know, it, it, it's one of those things where, where you, you know, probably in hindsight he would like it back. Uh, but, you know, at times, and when somebody kicks a 58-yard field goal that isn't named Justin Tucker, sometimes you just got to tip your cap to the guy and say, that's a hell of a kick. Yeah, but, John, he kicked the 58-yarder. Then he came back and kicked the 55-yarder. Yeah. The 55-yarder well, one was yeah. the second one. They had an opportunity to move him back to 60. I mean, the psychological effect that it has to move from 50 yeah, and he said, and it, he, he probably liked that back. Um, you know, it, one thing Nick said is, you know, and I think I talked about it uh, through the 8 no start, this was the most well-rounded team in football. Well, this was a well-rounded loss. I mean, everybody contributed. Um, the offense was bad. The defense was bad. The special teams was bad. Uh, the coaching was bad. I mean, they were well-rounded in this loss. There's no way they should have lost this game. They all had to contribute, literally. Each each grouping, you know, the offense could have picked up the defense. The defense could have picked up the offense at times. Um, the special teams, I mean, I, I don't if, – if you guys saw the Aaron Cipas punt uh, where you had this sort of Australian mm -hmm. rugby it down – Yep. And they got called for a penalty because it was a legal man downfield. I don't know what the heck Kayvon Wallace. I've never seen somebody so free in my life. He just came off the edge. Kayvon Wallace is a personal protector. He ignored him. I mean, I, 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 this team just fell apart uh, today. And, and coaching was a part of it. John, well, you know, me, uh, uh, ask you about the uh, – yeah, Slay did not have a great game tonight. It, 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 McGuire, yeah. told, I mean, we're, we're focused on what Washington did rushing the football, but <laughs> he he really got a lot of good separation on Slay tonight. What what was up with that, that, that you think? Well, a couple things. Terry McLaurin seems to own the Eagles. I don't, I don't know what it is. I mean, you saw week two when Justin Jefferson was in here. They were able to do some nice things against Justin Jefferson, who, you know, is a different level of – receiver um terry mclaurin's a very good player but boy they struggle with him and it's pretty consistent um today was look you've seen it since jonathan gannon has gotten here you know they play a ton of quarters coverage they play a ton of zone coverage as a whole and when you don't communicate <clears throat> on the back end it looks ugly and guys were not communicating today, and they were pa passing guys off Terry McLaurin mostly because, you know, he was the one who did the vast majority of the damage in, in, in the passing game. They were just passing them off when they weren't supposed to. There were guys not picking them up in zones. It was just a mess out there. It really was, and it was surprising considering the first eight, eight games of the season. Hey, John, um, we, we saw A.J. Brown on that out route stick his foot in the turf, and when he made the catch, he, even before he caught the ball, you could see him limp in favor of that, that ankle. Um, any update from him or anybody else uh, close to him in, in terms of – because he didn't look right the rest of the game, to be quite no, honest. Any yeah, update he, on that? Yeah, A.J. himself said he rolled it uh, and rolled his ankle. He said he'll be fine. But it was clear that he was not the same guy, as right. you mentioned, he got he, he, he was not, he gutted through the game. And he had tape on the ankle, if, if you saw it. Um, but Nick admitted after the game that, yeah, they had to shift things around because he was more out there as a decoy than anything else because uh, he couldn't play like A.J. Brown usually plays. So that really impacted the Eagles' offense as well. More Devontae Smith, more Quez Watkins. And, you know, Quez, he had four targets. He caught him four, all four of them. 
80 yards, he had the big 50 yard gain. And man, if he just finished that play, he didn't even have to finish the play. He could have stayed on the ground. I think the Eagles had the momentum. They would have eventually went in to score, tries to get up. St. Juice punches the football out. You know, maybe that was karma because Nick made a big deal about how there's no luck involved. Our ball security is because we teach it, we preach it, we do this, we do that. Well, they saw today that when the ball doesn't bounce your way, some bad things can happen. Yeah. Hmm. John, two things. I um, want to talk about, you know, the struggles that Slay had. Um and one of the things that I noticed on the defensive side is that, you know, you talk about that quarters coverage. And, you know, when you're playing quarters coverage, you know, you, sometimes you got to disguise. You can't line up four across on the back end and give a quarterback a pre-snap read because the quarterback knows that you, and the wide receiver knows in that coverage that you've got three guys on the inside that's taking care of everything that's underneath, okay? Anything from the from the numbers to the outside, you know, that's an easy pitch and catch, you know. So I don't, I'm not understanding why the Eagles aren't disguising that coverage where you get the corners up, you know, once the quarterback gets into his cadence, you can bail him off and play quarters, you know, from a bail perspective rather than lining up pre-snap and just showing it to him. And, and, and again, I believe that Bradbury and, and Slay – are much better cornerbacks, you know, when they're up, playing up on, up on the wide receivers rather than off. Because when you're off, if your technique isn't perfect, you know, any kind of stem moves or stutter moves that the wide receiver gives you that you react to, now you're you're always a step off, and that completion is really really easy. Um, so, talk to me about that, and then, lastly. You said, you know, the sky isn't falling, you know, just because they lost one game. Maybe it is to a certain extent because if they can't stop the run, the next five opponents are going to do the same exact thing to them, okay? And if they dominate the time of possession and dominate the line of scrimmage the way they dominated tonight, it's highly likely, you know, that the Eagles are going to struggle through the next five, six games. Did he get fro he got froze out? I talked uh -oh. to I talked so him you, into you, the you, freeze. You, you, your question was so long, he froze. Hey. He froze. Uh, well, in that case, we lost John. So uh, but thanks to John McMullen for, for joining us. And we'll just uh, we'll take a break. We'll come back. We we you know we have to break down some uh, some segments of this game where things turned and, and the Eagles were right there and then it just kind of didn't get over the top and uh, they let Washington uh, score uh, on some drives that a couple field goals that I, you know I, I wasn't expecting. Uh, but we have our drive of the game that's coming up, and uh, it's the uh, Pong the Hockey Eagles post game show. We're still we're still doing it live right here from Ocean Casino. We're back after this. Jim T. 